In his second full day as governor, Dan McKee has made what he calls small but important steps to getting businesses back on track. Good evening. I'm Mike Montecalvo. And I'm Shannon Heggie. Starting tomorrow, gyms, restaurants, and funeral homes will now have increased capacity. We have team coverage of today's COVID-19 briefing where these changes were announced. Anita Buffoni was at today's briefing and has the details on when Governor McKee says he wants teachers vaccinated by. But first, 12 News reporter Chelsea Jones is live in Providence with the latest on the changes being made to business restrictions. Chelsea? Shannon, well, Rhode Island Commerce Secretary Stephen Pryor says he, the governor, and their team have been working really hard to ease restrictions as COVID numbers and hospitalizations go down. So here's what they've come up with. Starting Friday, restrictions are changing. We're pleased to be able to offer more flexibility to the businesses of this state as our public health conditions continue to improve. Gyms will now be able to pack more people into their facilities with the new easement that allows for one person for every 100 square feet and outdoor classes have no limit. We've talked to individual businesses, gyms and fitness centers, yoga studios, etc. This can mean a couple of new customers for the smallest of studios. It could mean dozens of new customers in a larger or big box facility. Smaller studios are potentially eligible for even looser restrictions, but they have to reach out to the Department of Business Regulation for further guidance. Be prepared to explain your studio's ventilation, how you test your clients, and what mitigation efforts are in place for social distancing. As for restaurants, capacity has been bumped up to 66%, and at the beginning of April, catered events could soon house 100 people inside and 150 people outside. Testing prior to these events will Will be necessary alongside many other adjustments. The ability to reopen with confidence relies upon having certain safety precautions in place. And dancing, that's on the table, but it won't be discussed until March 14th. Funerals can now have more attendance too. Capacity has been increased to 30 people inside and 50 people outside. Now, these changes are long awaited for several industries. We've covered it for you extensively for over a year now. And at six, I spoke to a catering company who says, you know, these easements are a great thing. However, it does add some more work to their plate. I'll explain what I mean at six. We're live in Providence. I'm Chelsea Jones, 12 News. In his first briefing since taking office, Governor Dan McKee addressed vaccinating teachers today and when he wants to see them get their first COVID-19 shot. 12 News reporter Anita Buffoni has the details on that about other headlines discussed at today's briefing. Anita. Mike, well, this was just his second full day as governor, and, and he wasted no time laying out his vision for Rhode Island's vaccine rollout. And one of the next groups he wants to see eligible for their shot are teachers. The setup of the weekly COVID-19 briefing looks a little different this week. That's because a new governor is calling the shots. Give us a new setup today. By far, his biggest challenge leading the state is vaccinating Rhode Islanders, and McKee is taking a page out of President Biden's book. We're going to adopt that as our goal to get a shot in the arm of all teachers and related staff um, with a high goal of before the end of the month. How and what that will look like won't be outlined until next week. But what we do know is that prioritizing teachers won't impact those next in line. We are planning to get educators vaccinated and we're doing this while continuing to stay on schedule with our next groups that have been mentioned. The increase in vaccine supply will help with that effort. The state received 9,100 doses of Johnson & Johnson's single dose vaccine this week. It's in the process of being distributed to health centers, hospitals, and state and locally run clinics. And more state run mass vaccination sites will be opening soon. We will open new sites in Middletown and Woonsocket shortly. The Middletown site will open first, either next week or the following week. And for those homebound Rhode Islanders, there are plans in the works to have Johnson & Johnson's vaccine be used for those targeted communities that would benefit from the one-time dose. I'm Anita Buffoni, 12 News. First tonight, more people will soon be allowed in Rhode Island's restaurants, gyms, and at funeral homes. I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. Governor Dan McKee is lifting some business restrictions as the health director says Rhode Island is in a stable place with COVID-19. Well, unfortunately, the health department reported another five deaths today. The positivity rate is below 2% and the number of people in the hospital continues to fall. We have team coverage for you tonight. 
12 News reporter Anita Bafodi is standing by with what the governor had to say about the vaccinations at today's briefing. But first, 12 News reporter Chelsea Jones is live with the changes in restrictions. Chelsea? Shannon, Mike, like you guys mentioned, starting tomorrow, gyms, restaurants, uh, funerals and caterers can now start serving more people and business owners I spoke to says that that's a great start, but it will require more work. Restrictions have been up and down for the last year and Friday they're changing again. Here's what's new. Gyms can have one person to every 100 square foot inside and no limits to capacity outside. Funerals can now have 30 people inside and 50 people out. Instead of 50%, restaurants can now seat 66% of their establishments and some that is progress. We're grateful for any increase in business. Um, you know, we can remember a time where it was strictly carry out. For catered events come April, they could be seeing changes too with capacity at 100 people inside and 150 people outside. Catering company Easy Entertaining says they're excited for the changes and are hopeful for new guidance with one particular topic. Dancing in particular, um, that's everything to couples because not everybody's looking to just have a dinner party. But Caitlin Roberts tells me it's the added work that'll be the challenge. And we are responsible for checking every single person's test results as they come in the door or testing them. But she says they'll get it done. In the meantime, over at Davenport's, while restrictions are eased, many things won't change. Well, we're still gonna maintain the same safety precautions, uh, social distancing, six feet apart, uh, masks on at all times, including our kitchen staff. And on March 14th is when Rhode Island Commerce uh, Secretary Stephen Pryor says we can expect to hear things about dancing at venues as well as other capacity restrictions. Live in Providence, I'm Chelsea Jones, 12 News. Meantime, Governor McKee is also keeping focus on the vaccine rollout. Following today's briefing, he visited a vaccination clinic in Woonsocket. The governor says cities and towns will play a big role in getting more shots in arms, particularly for teachers. Uh, we're already working on a strategy that Woonsocket will be taking the lead once we get the, the program up and running, which is not going to be too long. A couple weeks from now, uh, we'd, I would expect that teachers will be vaccinated right here at this site. Governor McKee talked about getting teachers vaccinated at this afternoon's briefing. 12 News reporter Anita Buffoni continues our team coverage. Anita. Hi, Mike. It was a change in setup for the first briefing for Governor Dan McKee since taking office, but there wasn't a change in his priorities. One is getting teachers and school staff the first dose of the vaccine by the end of this month. Day two. Here we go. With his name officially on the podium, Dan McKee takes the reins of the weekly COVID-19 briefing as Rhode Island's governor. Top of mind is getting shots in the arm, including for teachers. That's a change in strategy from the Raimondo administration. We know Rhode Island is just one of the few states in the nation that is absent a plan for te to get teachers and school staff vaccinated, and this is the time to do it. I can't tell you how we sighed. It was a breath of relief for all of us. McKee pledging to mirror President Biden's plan, but said next week more details will come on that front. But when teachers are prioritized, the health department says it won't delay the next eligible group. That's partly due to the increase in supply, including the 9,100 doses of the single shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine that arrived in Rhode Island. We will also eventually be using some of this vaccine for homebound Rhode Islanders and other targeted communities that would benefit from a one-time dose. Two additional state-run mass vaccination clinics are in the works, set to open soon. One in Woonsocket and the other in Middletown, which health leaders say will be the first to open within the next two weeks. And we learned a short time ago that unlike CVS, teachers and school staff will not be able to get a vaccine at Walgreens locations. A, spo a spokesperson telling us it is not participating in the federal retail pharmacy program in Massachusetts and Rhode Island like CVS is. I'm Anita Buffoni, 12 News.